Welcome back, ladies and germs, to another episode of Manga Transdub Theater, where we take public domain Japanese comics, English size them, and then make funny noises. <laughs> I'm your host, translator, sound engineer, director, and occasional skeletal mummy, Nicholas Tyson. Today we have another thrilling episode of Kabashiman Oda's Show Chan Adventures. In our previous outing, Squirrel and Show turned into butterflies. They met a beautiful goddess and had themselves an existential crisis. You can check out that episode on this channel, but for today we have... Ugh, oh man. <laughs> oh, this, uh, this cuneiform katakana really hurts my brain. Uh, uh, Shinomiyako. Shinomiyako. The dead city. The dead city. It's... Metal. <laughs> or, I guess, a little metal. Anyway, let's get started. Long ago, deep in the deserts of Mongolia, which I guess is the Gobi Desert, Sho heard there was a city that left no trace of its existence upon the land. How exactly do you know about this place? I saw it written once in an ancient tome. Sho had mounted his camel and was about to ride off into the desert in effort to find it. I'm going to head into the desert while it's still light. Oops. Again, production values. <laughs> I'm going to head into the desert while it's still light. But what if it was all just a pack of lies? As our companions made their way further in, all of a sudden, a violent wind began to blow. <sighs> There's just too much sand swirling about. Oh, Squirrel, it's getting really dangerous out here. Sand flooded the air, causing their whole world to go dark and forcing the two of them to take cover beneath the camel. I, I can't even open my eyes. This is the worst. The sand was pouring down like rain, and it wasn't long before our companions were almost completely buried. I don't think we're going to make it, show. Just hold tight, squirrel. Their camel cried out mournfully, and the three of them had to sit tight before they could do anything to better their circumstances. By the way, in case you were wondering, in Japanese, a camel says, May you. <laughs> May you. Don't cry, Squirrel. Just just buck up, and we'll get through. Eh, that's not me. That's the camel. Fortunately for them, the dark cloud of sand began to clear away little by little from the sky. Thank goodness, we're okay. Hooray! Hooray! And that's actually literally what Squirrel says here. It's, it's called a... Called, it's... Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> As if from out of nowhere, a magnificent wall appeared in the midst of the desert. Hey, I don't think that city was there before. Well, that sure is a surprise. For the longest time, the city our companions were about to enter had been buried beneath the sand. I bet you that storm just now must have excavated it from the sand. Which only makes it all the more bizarre. Now, rather excited to press on, Squirrel and Show entered the city through its main gate. Heh, <laughs> not so suspicious now, are ya? It's just like in the book! Yeah, seems like it really is. Wait, did Squirrel read this book? <laughs> <clears throat> when they entered into the city, there wasn't a sign of life to be seen anywhere. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call foreshadowing. Not a single living thing! And no sound either. There, within the dead city, <laughs> stood a lone, massive temple. Oh man, this is super weird, show. The the gong of that temple bell nearly scared me out of my socks. Wait, wait a minute. The gong of the temple? I thought there was no sound. Whatever. Squirrel and Show made a single round about the city. After they'd completed their circuit, they stood back before the temple. What an extraordinary discovery! 
What are you, some kind of professor now? All throughout the city and temple, there were a number of komainu, stone guard dogs, that had tumbled over onto the ground. What happened to these things? Why are there so many lying about? There must have been a lot of doctors way back when. Okay, so this is one of those moments where, as your translator, I actually have to admit I have no idea what Squirrel is talking about. He literally says, <laughs> Mukashi isha ga okatta no desho. Like, there were a lot of doctors way back, a long time ago. Probably. I don't know. If you have an explanation for this, I bully for you, I guess. Sho made his way through room after room, and as he was walking through one of them... Each room is more spectacular than the last! Everything's so sparkly! It's like diamonds! And they never expected to find a table laid out with a fantastic feast. There has to be someone living here. Oh, I should probably keep quiet then. That's when Sho, for no particular reason, began to grow ravenously hungry, and when he went to take a bite of the food, he thought to himself, It's really weird how no one's around. Another complete serving of food appeared in the place of the one Sho ate. What? Uh, how'd that get there? Some monster or magical creature must live here. Our companions searched the room, every nook and cranny, but there was no one to be found. Make absolutely sure no one's here. I'm telling you, there's nothing. The strangeness of their circumstances caused Squirrel and Sho to proceed with great caution, and as they were sneaking about, a voice called out to them. This is some very unusual magic. We should get out of here. You there! Wait! Oh man, something's talking now. Excuse me. A show turned around to look. He saw the stone guardian move its eyes. I think the statue is talking to us. Sure does look suspicious. The Komainu greeted them with all due felicitations and asked of them a favor. I am the master of this temple. I stand here to guard against evil forces. It wanted them to fetch a pitcher of water from the cellar at the rear of the temple. You must not ask me the purpose of this request. Just know that I would be deeply in your debt. Moreover, I wanted sh squirrel, and sh squirrel, <laughs> squirrel and Show to splash water from the pitcher onto all the stone guardians in the city. So procure this vessel as quickly as you can. Sho set out with a simple, okay then, never bothering to inquire about the details of his mission. Uh, okay. All right, no questions. Got it. Again, maybe, maybe ask a little bit. <laughs> Take care of yourself, too, there. Okay. They headed towards the back of the temple, and sure enough, there was the cellar door. It's just like an old-fashioned wine cellar. I guess they use it for storage. Throwing caution to the wind, our companions plunged themselves headlong through the door. <coughs> There's so much dust in here. <laughs> Must be from when all the statues fell over. <laughs> That's when Squirrel's tail stood on end, and he let out a frightened squeak. <coughs> Cuckoo! <laughs> w what is it, Squirrel? As they peered within the chamber, they saw a mummy clutching a pitcher. Now it says mummy, but... Oh no! A mummy! It's a monster! Mummy slash skeleton. <laughs> As they approached, they saw the mummy, quote unquote, scoop a bit of water from the pitcher. It's it's alive! Oh oh show! I'm so scared. 
They realized, as the mummy lumbered toward them, this must be the pitcher the stone guardian was after. Fools, you've taken your lives into your own hands. I, I bet you he's the one who turned the temple map. Wait, wait, ah, guys, I screwed this up for some, some reason. Fools, you've taken your lives into your own hands. I bet you he's the one who turned the temple master to stone. Sorry, I got a little lost in my own presentation there. Sho whispered something to Squirrel and then ran off without hesitation. It's too dangerous! Run! <laughs> Looks like he took the bait. Seeing this, the mummy rushed after him. I haven't seen a living soul in over a hundred years. <coughs> I mean, that really hurts my voice. I shouldn't do that. Squirrel hid himself in the shadows and leapt out onto the mummy's leg as it passed by. Heh! <laughs> Good job, Squirrel! The mummy tumbled to the ground. <sighs> as the mummy hit the ground with a thud, Sho nimbly snatched the pitcher away. Looks like he pitched himself real good there. <laughs> Squirrel, this is no time to be fooling around. Sho took the pitcher and splashed a bit of water onto the mummy. Now that's what you get for cursing so many people. No, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. But within moments... The mummy had completely turned to stone. You should have gotten strong there, show. Yeah, we're real heroes now. Jeez, fool yourself much? The pair made their way back to the Komainu at the entrance to the temple. See, we did just as we promised. I wonder what'll happen when we splash water on all the other statues. Just as Squirrel gave voice to his curiosity, the stone guardian they'd poured the water onto disappeared, and in its place stood a man. For far too long I've been transformed by this foul magic. Now I get it. You must be the head priest. Just a hand... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For far too long, I've been transformed by this foul magic. Now I get it. You must be the head priest. And the production values are really on point today. Just a handful of this water could turn someone to stone, but if used again, that same person could turn back again. Fantastic stuff, don't you think? Just another one of nature's little mysteries, I guess. You two seem wise beyond your years. Sho splashed a bit of water onto all the other Komainu lying about the city. Gotta do one after the other. Each of the stone guardians turned back into a man and busied himself with some task or another. It's been some time, hasn't it? Oh, I'm so grateful. <laughs> sho chan has saved us all. Lastly, Squirrel and Sho put the one remaining stone statue in the cellar and locked the door behind them. Gotta make sure that one never gets out again. <laughs> yeah, what a jerk he was. Thanks to Sho, the Dead City had come back to life. Dead little Sho, he's our savior. And now the temple bell can ring out just the way it used to. Getting a little bit into the Lorax voice there again. I speak for the trees. The people of the city held a party in celebration of its renewal. Blessings be upon you all, and may we persevere until spring returns to this city of sand. They begged Sho to stay with them just a little longer. Please, do stay the night. Yes, we insist. Sho politely declined the invitation and headed off for his next adventure. I really appreciate the offer, but I gotta keep pressing on. Yeah, show along then. And scene. 
That's all for this week's episode. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really enjoyed this video, you can support my work on Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash it came from the manga. All one word. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, links for which can be found in the description below. I'll be back next week with another episode of Manga Transdub Theater, but until then, don't let the man get you down. Bye-bye. Uh-huh.